top of the time. This is tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. Well, welcome to Tea Time. That's right, Miss Liz is back, and you know what that means. It means story time and words, and that's right. We don't serve a beverage in this house. We serve a different type of tea. We serve real-life stories and real-life organization, businesses, authors, all of that incredible stuff so you can enjoy. So before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, and we're going to get you to ring that little doorbell so you can subscribe to Miss Liz and be notified when all these tea times are being live. If you'd like to join the live stream in this conversation this afternoon, we wish you would. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those in the comment section of the studio or you can private DM Miss Liz on her Facebook page and I'll get those questions out to my incredible guests that I have today. The guest that I have today in the house is Carrie Graham and I met Carrie a few weeks back and today we're here and we're going to spill some tea on adult learning. That's right. We're going to do an engagement, retention, application, teaching everyone appropriately. That is the tea that we will be serving today in the house. So before we get started, we're going to get the disclaimer bio, and then we're going to get Carrie in here, and we're going to spill some tea together, and we're going to go down some loopholes, some rabbit holes, all of that good stuff, and we're going to get you to enjoy a good entertaining tea time this afternoon. Disclaimer for Miss Liz is Miss Liz's Tea Time live shows. My, Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forth in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that relates to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Ms. Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all Tea Time shows are hosted on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a tea time on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a surprise, rescheduled, or a special tea time. So now a little bit about who's in the house, who's in the studio. Well, I have Dr. Carrie Graham in the back. Dr. Carrie Graham has never fit in the box of traditional expectations in school and at work. Despite often feeling restrained and overlooked, she learned how to use her natural skills to open doors for herself and others. Dr. Graham has leveraged her curiosity to help women top into their real potentials. Dr. Graham has a reputation of understanding stated and unstated problems, then asking critical questions to help uncover clear and actionable solutions, not believing in the one-size-fits-all approach. She customized learning solutions to support complex individuals and organizational learning needs. Let me get Dr. Carrie Graham in here and let's spill some tea together. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Carrie. Hi, Ms. Liz. How are you? I am good. I, you know, the opening always takes me on a real loop. I'm just like, da 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 da. I sound like a rambling ox coming in for a big party. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I absolutely. Love it. You totally set the stage. I'm honored to be here and I'm so excited to see where our conversation goes today. So Dr. Carrie Graham, let's take you way back. Yeah. Who was Carrie as a little girl and who's Carrie now? Oh my goodness. You you don't waste any time, do you? I <laughs> get right in and get that deep tea going. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, well, I, you know, 
the Cary Graham, the Dr. Cary Graham that I am today is not who I ever thought I would become. That little version, of, that younger version of myself was an incredibly shy, inquisitive, um, played games within our head. Um, I was an only child for 13 years, the first 13 years of my life. And then my beautiful sister joined our family. Um, but so I spent a lot of time alone and entertaining myself and, and was quiet. I, I just was a quiet kid. And while my friends were growing and exploring and becoming, you know, popular, so to speak, I still remained, I kept to myself and within myself. And while, you know, in my teens and even in, in my early 20s, I felt like that was a, a limitation. Um, what, I, what I started to learn was that I could use it to my advantage. So the fact that I don't fit and that I'm not like everyone at that time, I'm not like everyone else. And um, it fit. And what I found was people would tell me things. People would tell me the things I did not want to know, but they would just tell me stuff, very personal things about themselves. And I kept thinking, like, why does this keep happening to me? And um, fast forward, I'm 51 now, and I realize all of that was setting the stage for the work I do today. So I learned the power of listening, like true active listening, listening with compassion, listening with empathy to what people are saying as well as what they're not saying. Um, leveraging that and, and continuing to invite people to tell me things, but recognizing that that is an honor. And I hold, you know, when people tell me, I don't know, their secrets or what have you, those, excuse me, those things that are very private to them, I hold, I cherish, and I honor those things, and I guide them. If they've asked me to, I guide them through a journey of exploration um, to a solution that they have identified for themselves, but they need some support getting there. So Carrie, what got you into adult learning? It was purely by accident. <laughs> just going to tell the truth, right? Like no one has ever, no one has ever asked me why they asked me what it is, but not why it was truly by accident. So I had some professional experiences that were not great that led up to me pursuing a doctorate. And actually I was planning to go in one direction and a gentleman that I worked with, um, at my, at, the organization where I was working, we didn't work directly together, but we were in the same division. And he goes, can I buy you a cup of tea? I heard you were pursuing a doctorate in this area. And I'm like, sure. Like we've never really had lengthy conversation, but sure. And in that conversation, he shared with me, he's like, you know, he offered some guidance. It was totally unsolicited. Um, I don't know why he felt and it took an interest in me in that moment or in that phase of my life. And he goes, I think you might, this other thing, this adult learning might be the better fit for you. I encourage you to explore it. He did not lie. I sat in that first class and I was like, this is for me. Um, and it's because it spoke to my experiences, like my workplace, learning and my workplace development experiences. It spoke to my relationships and how you interact with others. Um, it, it really touched all parts of who I am, who I was and who I want to be. And so adult learning, I stumbled on it. I stumbled on it. <laughs> well, you stumbled on it and you got a free cup of tea. <laughs> I got a free cup of tea. I absolutely, I got a free cup of tea and it, it, it has really touched my heart. I mean, I have a, prior career as a healthcare provider and then a healthcare educator in sports medicine. I'm board, I was, I retired my credential, but board certified. And so it's just not something that I ever 
I, I never dreamed of. I, it was never in my wildest dreams, never. Well, you see, you just got to spill tea sometimes and get sometimes. a cup of tea. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you can accidents make and make for a good story. <laughs> Absolutely. They, they always do. They always do. And, you know, that's also one of the things that I've learned. And I think it's, you know, the adult learning piece speaks so much to me because I really, re I view my life and I always have viewed my life as an adventure every, and I always say this, every day is truly an adventure. And it's, what are you going to do with the adventure? Are you going to just plow through it? Or are you going to view it as an opportunity to learn something, whether it's learn about a thing, learn about other people, or learn about ourselves? And I always learn something more about myself every single day, every day. Well, Dr. Carey, you know, spilling the tea in a good way, right? Yes. And making, yeah. making an accident and having that adventure open the doors and opportunities. Yes. So yes. I want to talk to you about adult learning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we don't talk about adult learning very much. We talk about children learning and elementary schools and public schools and high school and all that colleges and universities, but we don't talk about adult learning. Yeah. So how do you feel about uh, society on, on that, that topic not being out there? Yeah, it is not a, commonly discussed topic. Um, the, the field has been around for decades. The research has been around for decades. Um, but, you know, I think so often people identify, oh, well, I am a, I'm a lifelong learner. That's a, a, a term that you hear frequently. I'm a lifelong learner. And oftentimes when people use that language, what they're referring to is, oh, I like to learn new hobbies. I want to take a class. I want to learn a new skill. And yes, those are elements of lifelong learning. Um, but the other part of lifelong learning is recognizing how do we emotionally regulate right, as a continuous process? How do we grow in our spiritual walk if, if, so, if that's important to someone, right? Those are also elements of learning. And depending upon what that looks like, that journey can be lifelong, right? So like a walk of faith, parenting, right? Like those can be lifelong experiences, but rather me learning how to make lamb chops one year for my family for the holidays. Like I, I figured it out like the night before, right? I learned something the night before I did the thing. We ate it. It was good. That was like six years ago. I haven't done it since and I have no <laughs> desire to do it since, right? Like, so, so yes, I was learning in that moment but it, it was such a short window of time. That does not make for lifelong learning. Yeah. Um, so it's what I've seen in, in the world today is because there's so much information in the online and the digital world and all things consumerism, people are bombarded with information that requires cognitive processing that is an element of learning, yeah. right? So to, to consume, whether it's visually or you're hearing something or whatever the case may be, your brain is consuming that information and the cognitive processing is an element of learning. And now that you've processed and learned, you then have a decision, do I act on that information or do I just store it somewhere? Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, where a lot of the like online and digital fatigue comes in. It's because people are attempting to process like 50 tabs that are open, you know, whatever the case may be, they've processed it and they are now at a place of what, what am I going to do with that information? And for the information that's, that is un, that's not needed and you just set it aside, you can't unlearn something. You don't unknow things. And so that process of learning, that's exhausting. 
Yeah. And so we are in us culturally as a global society, we, I, I would say we're at a place of intellectual and cognitive fatigue. Well, we're exhausted, right? Because there's so oh, much coming at us and we're just yeah. like, whoa, can we just take a break? Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's, and, and when we make those statements, like they're, it's not always that simple. And, and I don't mean it from the, oh, we're addicted to our screens. Right. But like, there's that process element of it. And so, you know, uh, full transparency before you and I started this conversation, I would say I probably had 15 tabs open and some of them were for the same site, but just a different page on the site. That's a lot of information, right? So, okay, I'm over here using these tabs. Now I need to go back. Well, which one was it, right? So now I'm clicking back and forth. like the brain has to process all of that information. Like, What's well, right, Dr. Carey, it's like it is uh, uh, connect the dots, right? Yeah. You're connecting yeah. the dots like, and, and then you end up where you're like, oh my God, what, what did I just do? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. where your yeah. brain just says like, wow, this is overload. So what do I do? Oh, do I take one and four? Do I take four and seven or do I go <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So we're yeah. no longer making a picture out of it. We're just making zigzags and we're right. like overwhelmed. Right. And we're, right. we're getting fatigued. We're getting burnt out. We're having mm -hmm. all of these uh, businesses and organizations that are just starting to shut down because there's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, I just had the thought of when you, you know, you send an email, like you hit the send button too quickly, or you close out something when you didn't mean to, like all of those are, I mean, some would say, oh, it's, you're just ready to get it over with, right? Like you, you are acting too quickly. I would say, yes, that's part of it, but it's the fatigue, right? Like you want to get on to the next thing, not because you don't want to, you know, type the email or you don't want to spell the words correctly, right? Like you do want to do those things, but it's, it's the fatigue. You know that there are other, your brain is telling you there are other things we have to do and we need to attend to. Okay, this is done. When in reality, it's like, it's just an outline. It's not a cohesive email or whatever the case may be. Or you send half an email, right? And then you're like, yes. oh, I forgot. I pen yes. sent, right? And then you're like, yeah. oh, where, where did I leave off? Right, right. I would say that all of that it fits in the field of learning, right? Like we've learned how to, our brain has learned how to, when we're typing a sentence, to fill in the gap. And so our fingers skip a word. Yes. You know, like that is a part of, it's a part of learning. And, you know, one of the things that I've seen in the marketplace since I've been a consultant full time is this idea and this concept of unlearning, right? People, yes, there. I, I, the gentleman's name escapes me right now. He did write a book that was titled Unlearning or Unlearn. And people have just taken that like off the rails. But if you actually read the book, I haven't read the book, but I've skimmed it and I get what he was going for. But the reality is you cannot un learn something. It is humanly impossible. Once you know something, you either forget it or you remember it, but you choose to not use that and use an alternative. It's like conflict resolution, right? You've learned that yelling helps you get your point across. And then you find yourself in a season of life where yelling no longer, it's ineffective. You can't unlearn the skill of yelling. Instead, you learn an alternative and you make an alternative decision. And I, I would say like, that's, that is one of those things. And this is a little bit of tea about me. That is one of those things that annoys me to death, right? Is when I hear people say, oh, well, we have to unlearn. We have to, no, you cannot unlearn anything you learn new skills and you get to choose a different path. Yeah. It's like, it's like seeing 
seeing one, you know, like seeing something that you wish you couldn't see. You can't unsee it. Right. Well, you can't put a bunch of uns in front of everything, right? Because that's undoing your life, undoing a situation, undoing a moment, a memory. Right. Like you, right. you can't do that, right? Right. Mm -mm. you can't you can't you cannot you can choose different you can make different choices you can pretend that you forgot <laughs> <laughs> right right but that's that is the one thing right that i i i it, it i i just shake my head and like oh with the unknowing well it's like uh the the series of the dummies books right yes those yes. books irritate me because when I first seen the title, I was like, so what, we're all a bunch of dummies? We, we can't do it. Like, just the title. I was just like, like seriously. But it grabs people. And it does. It does. It's, it's really ama it amazes me, right, that the, the, that word dummy grabs you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, un unlearn grabs you. Right. Instead right. of learning and growing and mm -hmm. Choosing. finding solution solutions yeah. like even the word solution you 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 have a conversation with somebody and they don't want a solution they just want to complain and they just want to keep staying in that broken right. circle right of right. oh right. well i can't do that i can't the word can't drives me up the wall too yes you can you can <laughs> we you know it to, your can't is my choose right like yeah. we all get to choose we may not like the options we may not like the options but we still get to choose. Like Absolutely. I, I would say on a daily basis, I don't like the options. The option is stay in bed in the mornings and not get a good start to my day, or I can get up and go for a walk. Like those are, for me, those are the only two options. I don't like either one of them. I really don't like either one of them. <laughs> But, I gotta but then the walk is done and then the day is started and then you're right. moving. Right. But if you stay in bed and you're just like, okay, well, you know, it was like yesterday I had booked three tea times for December. Right. And I was yeah. like, well, I'll just stay in bed because I seem to be booking. And I'm just like, well, no, that's not the way it works. It just, it was just the timing that the emails came in that they, they had confirmed. And I was just like, okay, well, no, we're not doing this. We're getting up, we're moving and we're getting yeah. the day moving. You know, yeah. but it's a choice, right? It's a choice. It is a choice. It's not that I can't. I'm with you. Like, it's not I can't do something. Well, you can. It's the choice of how are you going to do it, right? Like, I, you know, I give up things periodically for fasting or for Lent for religious reasons. And I, for years, years ago, I had to change that my narrative and my language around, well, I can't have, right, to, you know what, I'm choosing to sacrifice X, Y, and Z because, um, because I can, we can really do whatever we want, like, and assume the benefits as well as the consequences. Like every, we do have more autonomy of choice than we like to admit that we have like you said people want to stay in a place of complacency and and complaining yeah well mm -hmm. it's learning right it's, learning. <laughs> it's all learning it's all moving forward guys yeah. you know it's like yeah. pouring that cup of tea like you got to pour the water into the cup you got to put the mm -hmm. tea you have to do the work for it you know mm -hmm. um let's go into i want to get into the era and yeah. when i talk about the era is Dr. Carey's era of engagement, tension, and application. Let's talk about those words and let's talk about why you came up with the, the era. Yeah, yeah. So the, the era, it stems from me solving, or not solving, but for me addressing a frustration. So as a healthcare provider, as a professor, you know, there are I was required to sit through training, not sit through, required to attend trainings. Some of them were um, board mandated, some of them were state mandated, whatever the case may be. And I got to a stage in my career where I'm like, this is boring, I don't like it, or this is confusing. I know they're smart, but I don't know what they're talking about. And then the last thing was, 
oh, this was enter this was interesting and it made sense, but I don't know how to apply it. Right. So it was like month after month of me having this experience, come to find out I wasn't alone. And that's what I found to be a, a constant theme, a consistent theme throughout most trainings, regardless of what industry, what area, there was this lack of engagement and not entertainment, but engaging the audience in a way that's meaningful to them. Then there was this this way in which content wasn't constructed so that people comprehended and remembered, right? So it's like information was just presented, but it there was no rhyme or reason real for, for the audience, so to speak. And then it was not knowing what to do with it. Like that's problematic. If we think about law enforcement, and I say this because my husband is retired law enforcement, is that you have trainings and sometimes if people don't know how to use the information, not only is their life in jeopardy, but the life of others is in jeopardy. So as I ventured as a consultant, I realized it's truly around people need support around how do we engage the, 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 the user, the audience, in a way that matters to them so that they're motivated to lean in and pay attention and continue to learn, right? So like that's a large body of the work that I do with clients is how do we engage your audience? The second part around the R with retention, it's the information retention, remembering the information. It goes back to me using my years, two decades as a faculty member. It's you have to sequence information for people, right? You can't, you can't be so excited. You're giving them everything you know and expecting them to land where you are today. You really have to like start with the basics, check in with them to make sure like, do the basics make sense? We all on the same page, right? And if not, then stay there, you know, fill those gaps, build the information in a way that helps them remember, right? So like asking them to repeat things and, you know, all of those tricks. And, and by doing that, you're, reinforcing, you're helping and guiding your audience to remember the information. And now in order to get them to actually apply it, well, you have to show them how to apply whatever it is and build their confidence in it, right? So like Liz, how many times, I'm sure you can appreciate that there have been times where you knew what to do and how to do it but you weren't confident and so you didn't do it right or though they've been and there have been instances where you have confidence right and so you, those are the people i think who like they'll just go out and fumble and make all the mistakes right because they have the confidence i'm not a fumbler <laughs> right? sometimes I'll i am fumble, i'll fall i'll try again i'll get back up but right you Right. But it's the, so you have the confidence to do it, but you don't know, you don't have the skills. You haven't developed yeah. the appropriate skills. And so in the, like the application piece of it is a training and a facilitator, a coach, a trainer, whatever, however you want to call yourself, you have a responsibility to help build confidence. And I don't mean rah, rah, you can do it, but building internal confidence and developing skill development so people know how to do the thing. So that's where the era comes from, the ERA, engagement, retention, and the application. And I wanted to make sure that the work that I do can be broken down to its like barest of bare foundations and that's what it is it's era well i think it's deeply important dr carrie to have people like you out there because we have a bunch of fumblers like me that don't have the skills we'll, we'll just try when we fall okay we get back up but yeah. we do need to learn we need the you know it's that lifelong learning that you mentioned about right 
yeah. is, and that's why we have different coaches and different mentors and different fields mm -hmm. of work out there is yeah. to work together, collaborate together, connect together and stay motivated together. You know, yeah. we can motivate larger audience and larger individual uh, groups when we work together than when oh. we stand by ourselves. You Absolutely. know, Absolutely. we could stand by ourselves. Everybody can stand by themselves, but mm -hmm. you know, it's to get that motivation. And mm -hmm. I was, I was told a couple of years ago, give to three E's when you're speaking as a public speaker, the entertainment, engagement, and education, bring your three E's to the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a lot, we're only bringing two of the E's. Yeah. Well, if you're missing that third E, whether yeah. it's the engagement or the education or the, it doesn't flow. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, oh, <laughs> right? <laughs> For you right. need that tick, tick. It's like back to the dot to dot, right? It's like yeah. that one, two, three. But you're yeah. jumping from one, two, one to three instead of you're missing the two. It's right. Like, and, and you know, another part of that I think that happens today is it's easier to do the one, right? It's easier to focus on the entertainment piece for, for, some people I'll say, it's easier to do that. It's easier to spew off all of your expertise and just stay at this level where you're super comfortable and confident and knowledgeable and just spew and spew and spew. But if you stay with like, if you only stay in that one E, you're still gonna miss the mark, right? Yeah. Because ultimately entertainment only can take you so far. And I tell people that like all the time and my clients who really rely or they want to rely on entertaining people, I'm like, it's not even a great source of motivation. It In my mind, like if your end goal is to change behavior and educate people like solely focusing on the entertainment it's not enough like it, it you're missing the mark you're missing the mark well it um, comes back to the training and skills right yeah. you, you just change the letters you change you know the s and the t but you're bringing mm -hmm. you got to bring stuff to the table you can't just go mm -hmm. there with okay this is the bread and we're just gonna make a big old party with bread right <laughs> where's the butter where's the where's the meat where's the cheese like come on we gotta bring the table right yeah. and, and and that's what i'm finding is we're not bringing stuff to the table we're coming in and we're saying well da -da 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 -da. i i can make you all laugh and giggle now when the show is done how many people took anything in right 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 so right. we're not we're not getting people motivated and and you had mentioned something the retention right mm -hmm. for me it's repetition you know yes. I, it's yes. repeat repeat <clears throat> repeat Ask mm -hmm. questions, get engaged, ask your audience and your listeners, do you enjoy what I'm bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Would you like to see something different? Am I not bringing something that you would like to see come to the table? You yeah. know, have those conversations. Right. And that's what we got when we talked, uh, when we did our, our one-on-one -on -one is yeah. we were like, okay, we need to bring this to the table. We need to bring the era to the table for people mm -hmm. to engage. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and when you ask questions, like as the facilitator, so let's just use this as an example. If I'm facilitating a session and I ask, well, does this make sense? Right? Because I said it there, you know, I said the thing, therefore it makes sense to me. But if I ask, well, Liz, does that make sense to you? And you say, no, I, I didn't really get it. That's a learning opportunity for me to figure out a better way to support you in your learning. Yeah. Like it, it is truly a back and forth. It is a get every learning experience that is set should be an equal exchange. And I, I have found that people don't recognize it as such. And I'm going to go so far as to say when I first started teaching, I made that mistake. I made the mistakes of focusing only on entertainment or I'm focusing so much on the content, like the rigor of the content that I, I was like for a good first two years, I kept losing people. And then it wasn't until I said, 
like I, I recognize it wasn't about me. And I said, well, does this make sense to you guys? And they were like, no, like that was a fun activity, but we don't like, we don't, it, you didn't connect anything for us. Yeah. There was or, no dots connected, right? There were no dots connected. Where do we or, go? <laughs> right, right. Like what, what do I do? Or it was, you are clearly the smartest person in the room, but we don't have a clue what you just said. Yeah. And like I, when, you know, those that I got that feedback, it was humbling because I'm like, I have totally missed the mark. I've totally missed the mark. I have got to do things differently. And so when you, as a facilitator, when you view your presentation or your workshop or whatever the case may be, as an opportunity for the for the, your audience to also teach you something in that moment, like when you recognize that and step confidently into that role, that is when your skill set skyrockets. It really skyrockets. You will be amazed at like the impact that you can have on your audience. It's unreal. It is truly mind blowing. Well, Dr. Carey, I always say this, right? I learned so much from my guests. Like, yeah. you know, we go down rabbit holes and we spill tea <laughs> and we, you know, we use words and we do storytelling and we get to know each other one-on-one, -on -one, you know, the audience mm -hmm. gets to know a little bit about who Miss Liz is. Cause sometimes Miss Liz just likes to slip and share a little bit of stuff, you know? And yes, I'm a big dot to dot person. If nobody has known that yet, I, you know, I, I just bought myself for Christmas, some dot to dot books. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I think these are things that we should be bringing to the table is getting feedback and being okay with feedback. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, because that's where we learn and grow. That's how we can improve ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we come into the table and we say, well, no, we know everything. We don't need you to tell us how to do our show. We don't need you to tell us how to do this we're not learning. We're not, we're not leaving room to grow ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, I don't know why this just came to mind, but for your listeners, I want you to think about when was the last time you looked in a mirror, whether you were getting dressed or even getting undressed, whatever the case may be, you were getting feedback. Yep. You were getting feedback. At, like, is everything where I want it to be like, Oh, is that, you know, thing, doing what it, like whatever. It is all feedback. And so people think about, oh, well, I don't want to get any feedback. I don't really want to ask what people think because I'm afraid. Like it is not a judgment of your character. It simply is information. And everyone's feedback is valid because that is their perspective, right? It's like, you cook something and you ask everyone at the table, do you like it? And let's just say everyone says no. Okay, well, why do you like it? Or one person might say yes. And so you start with them. Well, why do you like it? Well, it reminds me of a dish my mom used to cook or my dad used to cook and they were a horrible cook. But nevertheless, it reminds me of them. So it's good to me, right? Like it's still bad, but they, you know, that's their perspective. You ask other people, someone might say it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too sweet. It is their reality. And then you get to choose what you do with that information. Period. You no, know, you could just go in the room and cry and say, you know what, I'm never doing that again. I'm not bringing that to the table, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you could say, you know what, I can try again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Te I mean, teach me the skills. Like maybe somebody can teach you how to simmer it a little longer right. or extra right. add the flavors, right? If you get no feedback, how can you improve it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it's every day is an opportunity to learn something. And even when we don't want to learn things, we're going to learn something. Yeah. Every Period. day is a learning day. And yeah. I always learn from my guests. I want to get into your T, the T-E-A <laughs> words. So you gave me teaching everyone appropriately. And I like that mm -hmm. word appropriately, but teaching everyone. I like that as well because it's mm -hmm. showing that everyone can learn. Yeah. So oh, yeah. tell me, tell me why you gave me those three words, Carrie. Yeah. So I would say teaching 
Because it goes right back to what we were just talking about, right? Like learning opportunities are everywhere. At this today, our seasons are changing, right? Like everyone knows the seasons are changing. How do you dress for the day when you know there's going to be a 20 degree change, right? Like you can teach anything to anyone. And what a great way to build relationships by teaching. It doesn't have to be rigorous. It can be like, hey, let me show you a trick that I learned, right? Um, so that's the teaching part. It can be a beautiful thing if you do it that way. Um, everyone, meaning it's available, right? Like everyone can engage. Everyone has an opportunity to engage. Um, it's available. It is truly available to everyone if they open their eyes and, and welcome it. But I, I added the A because that's, I think, where we often get it wrong. And it's the appropriately. Um, you know, when we think about adult learners, oftentimes workplace trainings and such are um, developed or, or even like small businesses use training and coaching methods that they themselves have experienced and they may not be effective. But if that's all that you know, that's what you're gonna do. And so it's the appropriate piece, right? Like people need to be provided information in a way that matters to them, to them. I, I used to work in sports medicine and part of that work was rehab, rehabilitation, strength and conditioning. And I remember one time walking into the weight room and people were just yelling at this one person who was on the bench, just yelling, yelling, yell, yelling. And when it was all said and done, I asked the individual, I said, does that really work for you? Like all the yelling, does it really like work for you? And they said, yeah, that's, I asked them that the more they yell at me, the more like to pump me up, like to lift the barbell that worked for them. I said, oh, okay, okay. But it got me thinking, I don't like that. I don't like yeah. loud voices. I don't, I, I just don't like loud voices. And so when it comes to motivating me, I don't need that. I want someone to speak softly, even more so to me, you know, like rub my back, like, you got this. It's okay. You got it. You can lift the car over your head. It's okay. You know, and it's, it's going to hurt, but you can do it. <laughs> it's going to hurt, but you can do it. I have faith in you, right? Like it's the appropriate, appropriate meaning what matters for that individual? It goes back to that engagement piece. Yeah. The appropriately, it, it goes back to how are we sequencing information? How are we sharing the information? How are we presenting it? Are we presenting it in a way that makes sense for them or just makes sense to ourselves? Yeah. Right. So it's 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 teaching everyone, but the appropriateness is is the key for me. Look, and Dr. Carey goes right back to you as a child, right? Out out of the box. You thought yeah. outside of the box. Not everybody and I'm, me too. If somebody's yelling at me, it shuts me down. I'm just like, yeah. okay. Like I'm yeah. just like I'm I'm tapped out. I, I'm just like the next person is gonna yell louder. I, I've already tapped out because the first guy that yelled at me, I'm gone. Like right, you know, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I I'd rather have somebody like you know you got this. Like try it. Give it you know. Mm -hmm. If you fall, you're gonna get up. That that's the kind right. of you know. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I've noticed that with your business as well is that you work with individuals and small businesses and medium sized businesses and larger businesses. But you go in with a different approach for every single business. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the same approach, right? Because then everybody would be like, well, she did that over there. I, you know, yeah. if somebody comes to a webinar and they've seen you at that webinar and you go in, you do this, they're like, oh, well, I've already seen that. I'm not. Right. Right. And, and honestly, you know, if I'm going to spill the personality right now, like from a, 
from a business owner's perspective, like that's one of the things that I've had, I've, I've really struggled with when people are like, oh, give me your elevator pitch and get, you know, like give it to me in one really quick statement. I've struggled with that because I firmly believe that every business is different. And even though I use the era approach and I, I jokingly say it's a new, it's going to be a new era in your business, right? Like I use that as my guardrails. Yeah. That's it. But literally every conversation, every way that I support a business, it is so vastly different. Like if we pulled open the playbook, it's so different that one, I'm proud of that, that I have the skills, like I have the breadth and the depth of skill sets that I can do that. I can offer that as a service. Um, but it's, it's, I find it hard to stand out, right? In the, and we talked about this, right? In the vast landscape of all the noise, it's, I really have found that to be a challenging part of business ownership. And it's, I, I know I'm good at what I do. Um, I've been blessed in that regard. People have told me as such, but how I talk about it, I, ha I still have not, I still haven't figured that part out because it's different, because yeah. it's different. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like building a bridge, right? And filling yeah. in the gaps. Yeah. Somebody might put ropes all across their bridge, right? And they just yeah. keep building with the ropes and the planks, the ropes and the planks. Well, we're care and Dr. Carey builds a bridge with a rope, a plank, and a chain. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Like, we don't know. We don't know. We I, right. And that's the beauty of, like, whenever people, you know, reach out to me and they're like, you know, I've been thinking about, I, I, I'm considering, you know, looking for someone and such. I get super excited and I get excited because I'm like, here's an opportunity for their business to shine. Like first and foremost, like their business is going to shine. It's going to get better. They are going to feel more fulfilled because they're doing what they want to do with excellence. But then when I think about, mm, I'm going to get in their tea and I'm going to see what... You know, it's like a puzzle. How can we make all of this more refined? And I don't want to say better, but really refine what what beautifulness is already there. Well, understanding the tea within. Yes. You know? yep. Everyone's tea is different. And that's why all of my guests have different words. And sometimes you use the same word as another guest, but that doesn't resonate. It, it, it resonates in a different way. Because yeah. you might be giving me teaching and another guest gives me teaching, but they're teaching in different ways. Right, right. You know, bringing something different to the table. It's coming back to that table, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. seeing what you can bring and what you can add to the party. And let's just have some fun with it and That's stay nice. motivated and engage in entertainment and education. You know, right. education is really fun. Uh, I, I love it because it really opens the mind to understanding, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Carey, I want to get into research. Okay. When when you hear the word research, what comes to mind to you? <laughs> it's another. It's another one of those words. Like ah. Uh. <laughs> oh. This is why I asked you because I knew oh. what you were. she's got the power. And we're gonna do oh, this. Gosh, <laughs> right? Like oh. So. I say that because I say that because as a healthcare provider, no, as a clinician, when you are gathering research about a patient, you are doing an assessment, you're taking in all the information, you're gathering as much data as possible to either make a diagnosis, to make a recommendation for treatment, whatever the case may be. So that's practical. As a scholar, which I am, um, who has conducted research studies, analyzed data, I've used research 
methods, right? Reliable and validated research methods, specific methods. All of that requires skill. And it's not like you can't just come off the street and say, oh, yeah, I can conduct a, stu a research study using methods, right? Like yeah. there are lots of elements that you have to learn and everyone can learn them, but you have to learn them. And so that's the framework that I have skills at and that I, I love. I love that level of research. So let me get on Google. <laughs> Right. Let me get up like my two keyboards here. And you know everything because you've Googled it. <laughs> yeah, like this keyboard and that keyboard. Let me and my phone, right? Like let me let me do the that is not research. It's information gathering, but it's and that's really all it is. It's information gathering. Yeah. But when you are can truly conducting some form of research. It is steeped in methods. Like it, you have to use reliable and validated methods to get in a finding that you can trust. And for as I am on Google, and I'll be the first to admit, yes, I do Google things. Like how do I da 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 da? But if you, the next time you Google something, look at the number of results that pop up. Yeah. You, there, you can, not one person within an hour can research 12 million results that Google has populated. That's not doing research. You are simply looking at the first five, whatever Google pops up for you, and you're using that information. That's data, that's like data gathering, information gathering. And that's okay. It is okay to do that. But if you're going to talk about using research in your training programs or in your coaching programs and such, I want to caution people and I want to challenge your listeners to really be careful about the word choice that you're using. Right. Like if you're going to say, oh, well, my results are based on research. Well, who's research? Like, really? Like, let's. The first five on Google. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. You know, like, let's really think about that. And so all of it is fine. And if that's what you're using, that's fine. Call it what it is. Yep. Just call it what it is. Um, I have. The last time I used the, like in a social media post or something like um, based on the research by, like it's been a couple of years since I've said that, yep. but I know what that means. That means like I went in and I had to read these people's bodies of work. I had to get a very clear understanding. I couldn't just take one line out of a out of a published peer reviewed paper and say, I'm going to use that. Like, yeah, I just wish people would be careful with the words that they use. Well, it's, it's going right back, Dr. Carey, to the language that we speak, right? Yes. Yes. Like we spoke earlier in the show, can't, yeah. like can. yeah. you know, change the way that you speak to yourself, yep. change yes. the way that you speak to others, mm -hmm. you know, make different choices because we all have a choice. You we know, we can either stay in bed or we can go for that walk. Once the walk is done, well, then we make breakfast. Then we make, you know, then we, we make an appointment. Then we go we here. Then we go, right? we go shopping. We, you know, but we have to make that choice. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have to take the steps in order to get the skills and the training. And mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to have you on Tea Time, Dr. Kerry, is because I want people to understand that there are educator out there that have the skills and yeah. the proper training and the, yeah. that will look towards your business and say well no you, you can't do this can't do this can't do this we're but let's see if we give it a try this way let's see if we spill it this way right you know give it a try for right. like three months if that doesn't work okay well we'll go to this way you know right. like right and, and that's one of the things that i do with my clients i actually don't use the word can't with my clients i don't I wish one of my clients, if I have used the word can, and they're hearing me in this episode, 
please reach out to me and say, yeah, you told me I can't because I don't think I ever did say that. But I would say I don't use the word can't because it's your business. It's your business. You get to choose if you want to use a practice or a method that's ineffective. Well, of course you can. My job is to say, well, that's an ineffective approach yeah. in order to get more, you know, really achieve the outcomes that you want. You want to use a different method or a different approach. And here's how. But I don't I really don't think I've ever I've ever told a client that they can't do something. And honestly, I don't think I I tell anyone anymore that they can't do something. And it goes back to my where I've where I am at this stage in my life is I really do believe we all have the power of choice. And if you want to choose something that is ineffective or even that is harmful to your own well-being, that is your choice. Yeah. It is okay. I can give you all the information that would suggest otherwise, but that's your choice. Well, it comes back to choices, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. Instead of saying, I can't, I can try. I can you try. Mm -hmm. I can try. If you fall, you fumble. Well, you're like Miss Liz. Miss Liz falls all the time. I do too. You're not there by yourself. I do too. Or, I'm a fumbler. <laughs> or you can say, I'm not going to try. I'm not, I choose to not try. I yeah. choose to get someone else to do it for me. Right? Yeah. Like there, there's so many options out there, but I like what you said in terms of stop telling ourselves that we can't. Because I think it's easy to change how, it's easier to change how we speak to other people as opposed to our internal dialogue and internal narrative and how we speak to ourselves. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, I really hope that people learn the skills, not unlearn, but choose themselves and learn the skills of being kinder to themselves. Absolutely. And that's why the tea comes from within us, right? It's yeah. the way we talk to ourselves. It's the, the choices yeah. that we make for our own lives, mm -hmm. you know, the situations that we allow to keep happening, yes. you know, where yes. sometimes we need to close a chapter. We need to close that door in order to open a new chapter and a new, right. you know, uh, mm -hmm. Avenue, and I, I just love having you here, Dr. Carrie, because I know that you like to spill the personal tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I do, and you know what? Here's another piece. Here's another drop of the personal tea, right? Like I used to be so incredibly private. Like people never, people that I worked with didn't know anything about me. Like nothing. That they'd say, well, what'd you have for dinner last night? Mm, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Right? Like, and the truth <laughs> of the matter is my life is pretty simple and kind of boring, but I just, I, I didn't want to let people in. And a lot of that was fear of judgment. But at this point, I recognize how when we share our stories, whether it's our, our missteps or our successes, Right. I didn't use the word failures, but our missteps or our successes, when I share those, it's an opportunity for someone else to learn. Yeah. And truth be told, when you tell your own story and hear it, it's an opportunity for you to reflect. And, and sometimes we all need to reflect and just be reminded of. Right. And so I you know, there's really nothing that you could ask me or anyone could ask me and I wouldn't, I, I, I would tell it, I, whatever it is, I would, I would share that because I know the power of hearing people's stories, even the ones that are painful to tell, yep. they, they can serve a positive purpose. And that's what we do is we serve real tea here. Yeah. Not the beverage, but we serve the storytelling and the words, and we have some fun, and we get into it. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I love it. I love it. I love it. We go deep, right? Right from the get-go. Yes. So, yes. so, Dr. Carrie, if anybody would like to reach out to you, how could they reach out to you? 
They can find me at my website, drcarrygram.com. That's where I where I am. It talks about my the website, drcarrygram.com. Um, you'll find information about my services, my core values, but the gift that I want to offer is there's some personal stuff on there about me um, that I'm happy that people, it gives people a window into who I am. Um, but also they can always ask me questions. And so there are places on my website for people to connect with me and, and build relationship and, and get the support that they need, whether it's teaching everyone adequately or whether it's engaging, retaining and applying information, like however, whatever way works for them and whatever the need is, there's an opportunity for us to connect. So visit my website, drcarriegram.com. There you go, guys. Got, run on over, check her out, and we're going to spill some tea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, I had a blast with you, Dr. Carrie Graham. Uh, and, and without all of you listeners and supporters out there, Miss Liz could not do this. And I enjoy these conversations and I hope you do as well. I'm open to feedback. Give me some feedback. We will be back with two final tea times for October and November's lineup has been released as of yesterday. So check that out or go to Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatime.com and you can see the list of the lineup. It's a real diverse opportunity to get to know people next month and this month and the months before. Check out all the previous tea times because there's incredible ones out there. Um, and I will be back on the 28th with Jose Peral. He's going to be sharing his story about a hostage situation that he was involved in that took his life for five years. And now he's a motivational speaker. So we'll have his story. And then on the 29th, we have Joyce Fiddler coming in and she's going to be talking about sex, drugs and baby booming, all that good stuff. So you just never know what's coming to tea, right? We spill good hard tea on this show. So until then, I will see everybody same time, same place. And we'll spill the TEA with all of you all over again. Thank you and have a good night. Good night.